What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Project Ozone 2, a Kappa mode. Oh, yeah, guys. So last episode, we set up this big, big reactor. <laughs> it's only one block tall on the inside, but it's like, whatever, 27 by 27, I think, is what we made the size. I don't know. It's quite large. It is providing a decent amount of power. Uh, last episode, we set it up, and I turned it on. I was like, you know what? Next episode, we will go ahead and look at making this thing more efficient so it's not just burning all the fuel all the time when we don't need that amount of power. So I've done that off camera, actually. It's really not that big of a deal. Uh, so what you need is two RedNet reactor ports, or I guess a reactor RedNet port is what it's called. So you have two of them. One of them's gonna output a redstone signal to the other is the way this works. So our first one here on the white channel, we have set to output energy amount percent. So that is, you know, the percent of the internal power buffer here. So if we look, we see this says 97, 98, 99, 98, 97, 96, 95. Yeah, so the way this works is we're outputting that percent, and then we are going over into the other reactor RedNet port here, and on the white channel, we are saying input change control rod insertion. So when the internal battery is at 99%, the control rod insertion gets to 99 when it's at 97, the control rod goes to 97. So the further in the control rod insertion, the less power it makes. The further out the control rod, the more power it makes. So as we go to 97, it wants to make more power. As we go down lower and lower, it makes more power. And it kind of keeps this internal buffer kind of about the same power all the time, right? Uh, so if we look at these control rods here, we can see that the control rod insertion is going up and down based on that internal power, right? So we're always using a little bit of fuel, but we're not going full blast all the time. But as we need more power, this control rod gets inserted less and less and less. It makes more power and compensates. So it's a pretty cool setup. I like this. And then you just need some redneck cable to connect one. To the other, I don't think they have to be separated as far. I think you could just put them right next to each other, but I just separated them out by one block. So yeah, that's pretty awesome. So I think we could see this really do some work here. Like if I told the system to make some, how about some charged draconium? If we tell the system to make, I don't know, let's say 20 charged draconium, that's gonna use a lot of power. I think it's 10 million RF per block to charge it. So let's go ahead and do that. And if we go in here, we'll see that the energy buffer, it's all that we, empty we have opened it up it's going full throttle now as much power as we can possibly make until it charges up all of those things and then it'll shut back down or i guess insert the control rods to like 99 percent, 100 percent, or whatever uh so yeah this is really awesome so it only uses the power or it only really makes a lot of power when it really needs it uh so i guess if we do one of these we come over here our energy bank's probably empty is what's going on. Let's go take a look. Well, it looks like it must have just filled back up. So yeah, we're making 1.2 million RF per tick. Uh, I think all of the other stuff is done. I was expecting this to climb up a little bit faster, but I guess we were kind of compensating for the amount of power that I was putting in there and this never really emptied all the way. Anyway, so if we go and look, yeah, this is all done. All right, so draconic, the charged draconian blocks are completely completed now. So yeah, this is going to be filling up and then our reactor internal buffer should fill up. And again, it'll insert the control rods most of the way, slowing down the reactor. Uh, I think, I, I think that was just about full, right? There it is. So now yeah, that skyrocketed all the way up. The internal buffer is full. So now it's like, oh, wait, <laughs> calm down those control rods. Or I guess insert them all the way. Anyway, so this is pretty cool. I like it. So uh, now that we got our power situation kind of figured out, I left that running overnight and we were making some cyanide. So we have 855. I did let it go full blast for a while uh, just to make a few of it. But right there, I'm sure we just made a bunch of that stuff. Yeah, as it's going full blast, it makes an ingot about every second or two. Like it, it uses a lot of fuel, but it makes a lot of power too. So it's kind of good. Uh, anyway, uh, we, our next quest here, let me turn any eye back on our next quest here. What section was it? Theta Iota, this one wanted us to have cyanide. Uh, so it says reprocessed ingots that is usually used to begin the construction of a turbine. Wait, that's plutonium. I clicked cyanide. 
Okay, so this just wants us to have a retrieval task of the cyanide. It says a byproduct when you use eulorium is repos a byproduct when eulorium is processed through the big reactor. I'm having problems reading today. All right, so we just need a stack of that in our inventory, and that should complete that quest. There it is. All right, go and put that away. Uh, so we'll claim it. That's just a chance cube. It's not even going to give us a chest. Uh, poisonous reprocessing is the next quest. So that cyanite reprocessor, it wants us to craft it. So we have to make sure that we do it. Uh, I guess the basic machine frame works. I don't know why it's going to allow you to do any of these other ones. It'd be kind of silly to do like the top tier one, right? Anyway, let's go ahead and craft that. Okay. So that is now done. That's going to give us a chance cube plus a loot chest. We'll take the middle one. Uh, so this reprocesses cyanide into plutonium using water. So two pieces of cyanide plus a bucket of water turns into one plutonium. And I believe one plutonium is the same thing as like a yellorium as far as fuel is concerned in the big reactor. So that's what that does. Uh, so reprocess, this wants us to uh, have 64 plutonium. So we need two stacks of cyanide reprocess. So let's go ahead and grab two stacks. We'll grab... A tesseract, so we have power. We'll grab an infinite water. Until the system craft up one of those, pretty easy. Okay, so cyanide reprocessor. Uh, since we can grow eulorium, I don't think I've made the seeds yet, but since we can grow eulorium, there really isn't a whole lot of reason to set up this reprocessing thing. So I don't think we're really going to be doing that. We're not going to be worrying about that too much. Uh, so energy mode received, so it's got power. Uh, we don't have water. Uh, I guess this does not push the water in. All right, so let me get a conduit. Do, do. I don't remember how fast this particular machine is. I I feel like it's all right, but I think it is going to take a minute. Is that all we needed? That's it. So just that connection alone, not changing anything, just push the water in. Uh, so now we need to feed it in these things. So yes, it is using power. It's using water to process two cyanite into one plutonium there it is okay so i can probably let's see if we grab grab a chest we could probably grab an item conduit and just sit it push pull on both sides i think oh wait does it okay you know what i don't think we can do that because it has a green for the output and red for the input uh, so let's see. Well, I guess we still could do that. If we do a chest here, we could do one here. Oh, well, you know what? I don't think it'll connect to the front. Unless maybe I had to set it to can or to output to the front. I don't know. Anyway, we'll just do this and this. So we will do the back is going to be red. That's the input. So I'll say extract always active insert. And this one on the right hand side is going to be the output and we'll do extract from here and insert here. I'll put the cyanide in there. That's all we got to do. So after a little bit of time, we should have a full stack of plutonium, but yeah, this is going to take a minute. This isn't the fastest process ever. Uh, so we'll just let that go for just a little while here. Uh, is there another quest we can work on in the meantime? No, we're kind of like blocked. Uh, by this particular one in this section. You know, we could start working on some of these other Galacticraft quests where it just wanted us to make some of these things. Like, this wanted us to make, um, I guess, an airlock for, like, a space station or whatever. I really don't think there's any purpose to do that other than, like, I've never done it before. Let's do it. I've done it before. It's not really that interesting. So let's just go ahead and make the airlock. We'll make these because they are required quests and they are right on the same page. So let's go and do that. So airlock controller. And then it wanted us to make how many airlock frames? Nine of them. Uh, what is this? Oxygen concentrate. Ooh, ooh, okay. So we need a bit more of that. That was compressed tin. We don't have that on auto craft. Uh oh, okay. So I need to get myself an automatic camera thing. Wait, no. What are these things called? These are called electric compressor is what it's called. So I need to get myself an electric compressor. 
uh specifically for tin that's one we've never set up before so that might be a good idea to do that so this requires a great flux battery but says that it is missing for some reason i'm not sure we have that on auto craft it might be because of it was never in my inventory or something weird like that no electric compressor all right so let's tell it to make one of these great flux battery let's put it in my inventory and then we'll put it right here and then we'll tell it to make that again the electric compressor is that gonna work now no it still doesn't like this recipe okay let's figure this out why does it not like the electric compressor recipe what is it about this that it does not like it says allow substitutions of input great flux battery it looks like one of those um I wonder, can I take one of these things and just click it right there? And no, it doesn't like that either because now the recipe goes away. That is so weird. I don't understand why it doesn't like this. Uh, so this is still set to allow substitution and I'll click this one in there. It still doesn't like that one. Probably because the, uh, the wireless charger charged up a little bit. Is that what's going on now? Let's get rid of this thing for a minute. Let's try this again. So great flux battery. We'll put it in my inventory. It's not charged. We'll put it here. And now it says that the electric compressor. Yeah, I don't know. That, that's so odd. All right. So we'll put the pattern back into here and we'll see compressor. Hopefully it'll like it this time. Yeah, it says that's. <laughs> It doesn't want one that's charged and it doesn't want one that doesn't have the bar on it. So anyway, so now we have the electric compressor. We need to get some, was this compressed tin? Yeah, we need a bunch of tin in there. I'll probably just set this up to be a manual thing, but I do want an extra one of these. I don't want to touch any of these other ones. Actually, you know what? I guess we could have messed with these since these are all applied energistics now, aren't they? Yeah, that's fine. We'll just set this here. We'll use that eventually later on anyway. Uh, so we need energy conduit. Yeah, we'll use that eventually because we're going to have to make the uh, the further tiers for the rockets at some point in the future anyway. Uh, oh, you know what? This needs to be turned, doesn't it? And the power goes out the back. I already forgot how I had these things set up. It's been a minute since I messed with these things. All right, so we do one of these. If I can aim right at this thing, that'd be great. Yeah, just like that. And then we can run power right there. There we go. So now that's got power. Uh, so we can do 10 and 10. All right, so I'll go ahead and hammer. That's going to take a minute. Let me go ahead and let that finish up. I will do the crafting for the rest of the airlock components. Hopefully by then the plutonium should be done. And we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys. So after I got done making all of these oxygen concentrators, I put the recipe together. I was like, oh, wait, we get four of those at a time. We only need to retrieve nine. We only had to make three of these things. <laughs> we had enough of those 10 can canisters already. Oh, well. So there is 12 of those. That completes the quest. We have enough so we can make a bunch more of these, I suppose, but we don't really need 36 of those for the airlocks. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's go and claim the loot chest for this one out of the airlock. Uh, cryo sleep is another one that it wants us to make the cryogenic chamber and to make a cryogenic chamber, we need a bed, heavy duty plate, compressed dash. It should have all of those things in the system. I do believe, uh, we don't have a bed. Let's make a bed wool. All right. So let's make three wool. Oop, not four, three, do it. There it is. Cool. There's a bed and there is a, a cryogenic chamber. So this says press left shift for more info. Cryogenic chambers will allow a player to sleep during the day, heal a small amount of health, but has a cooldown. Okay. So this is something I don't think I've ever used before. Uh, does this require power or anything? Oh, I just right clicked on it. Just allowing me to sleep. Just right clicked on it. It's allowing me to sleep. Mm hmm. So this stuff right here, by the way, uh, I was completing some quests earlier. We were doing off camera before I started recording today. Actually, 
I started knocking out these quests here and this one right here the thermal power one um, I was trying to make this the thermal pile. I made that twice Thermo pile so this guy I made this twice and neither one of those Recognized that I was crafting it right so yeah Anyway, I did it twice. I thought maybe I screwed up the first time. <laughs> it didn't work. So yeah, I had to go ahead and go in, opt myself, edit the uh, the BQM book, and then I had to figure out how to turn the edit mode back off. That's what that's all about, if you guys are wondering. Uh, but anyway, cryogenic uh, chamber. This is kind of cool looking. It allows you to sleep during the day. I was kind of hoping it you know, put you inside there or whatever and look all cool, but I guess it's just like a vertical looking bed. All right, so there we go. So we can put these things away for now. I don't think we need the wireless charger at the moment. Uh, our cyanide, I'm sorry, our plutonium, our cyanide's reprocessed. Our plutonium is done. So that completes this quest. Uh, so where are we at? We're in this one? Yeah, okay, so reprocessed is done. Uh, we can claim this one. And then our cryo sleep one is done as well. We can claim that, that's just a chance cube. All right, so we are knocking out a good portion of the quests on this particular page. We still have to make the tier eight and tier nine rocket. We'll do that later though. Uh, so next quests, we have Ludicrate and then we have the turbine. Ludicrate, this wants us to craft four Ludicrate blocks. So the Ludicrate is made with two blocks of emerald, four plutonium, two ender pearls, and another star. I think we have all of that stuff available. Actually, we don't have the emerald blocks, do we? Let's go ahead and do that. I don't really remember how many emeralds turn into a block through this process. I assume this is going to be enough though. All right, so it looks like we got three blocks being made. All right, how many of these do we need? We need a total of four, so we need... Oh, you know what? There's also this one down here. <laughs> Uh, so you can use the nether star plus two blocks of emerald or you can do two enderium blocks i don't know why i didn't even see that particular recipe okay well um i guess we'll make another block of emerald is that gonna be enough for yeah then we need to put the other one through a gem cast to get the last one out all right so that's fine we'll let that go ahead and finish up yeah, I did not see that there was the other recipe there. So derp, that would be the easier recipe for us to do. So let's go ahead and do this particular one. Uh, Enderium block, can we craft that or do we have to smelt that down? We do have to smelt it. Okay, so I will just go ahead and smelt these down. Turn that off, turn these back on. Stick away two ingots from there. All of those go in, all of these go in. Okay, so now we should be able to make, uh, what is it? We need, I guess, eight blocks of enderium. So that should be done here pretty quickly. Um, yeah, there's six. They just need these to harden up one more time and we should be good. Cool. All right, so let's make our four blocks of Ludicrate. All right, Ludicrate. Okay, I guess we're just going to make one block. <laughs> uh, plutonium, let's put that in there and let's tell it to make this again. So there's one, two, three, and the fourth one. Okay, so now that quest is complete. Uh, so we'll claim a loot chest for this. The only thing left is the turbine one. Now this is going to require a bunch of different crafting stuff. I don't know if any of this stuff is too crazy. It is a retrieval task, so I can auto-craft some of these things in the system and create the correct amount. So let's look at like turbine. Let's just look at turbine. Let's just look at these different pieces here in the system. Now, normally like these rotor blades and the rotor shafts are expensive. Uh, those require cyanide and steel and the blades themselves just cyanide and steel. So that's not so bad. Uh, rotor bearing is more of those shafts, uh, some diamonds and then the turbine housing, which is steel, graphite, cyanide, and nether quartz. All right, so the power port, fluid port, and I don't think anything here is too crazy. Let me go ahead and finish up the crafting for this. It's just, you know, tell the system how to auto craft it. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and open these chests before we go. Got a lot of these in my inventory. So we got a tier one chance pendant. We get a compact giant chance cube. 
Lily pads of fertility, unbreakable wand, and our final... Oh, did we open up four of them? I thought we had four. Maybe we opened up all four of them. Okay, I guess that is it. <laughs> anyway, let me go ahead and finish up the crafting for the turbine stuff, and we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, so I got some bad news. Uh, I went ahead and I started making up all the different parts that we needed for the turbine until we got to the point where we needed the turbine controller. Let's take a look at this. Turbine controller. So the turbine controller does require a reactor controller, which is four and demon steel of third magnitude. That's pretty manageable, right? That's not so bad. Uh, some steel ingots and a reactor casing, not bad at all. However, this recipe right here that requires the reactor controller, requires plutonium, turbine housing, and two demon steel of the sixth magnitude. That doesn't sound so bad until you start actually trying to craft it. <laughs> Uh, so one demon steel of the sixth magnitude is going to require 729 Temperio Essence. And we need two of those. We currently have 164, uh, but 729, that is a, a heck of a lot. I don't even know if our system can have it or can handle that. I don't know if we have enough Manicio. We need two of those. So that's 1,458 of that. That's going to take forever. <laughs> Uh, we have 1.9 million Manicio. I don't even think that's enough Manicio to make that stuff, to be honest. Um, so we can't do that. We can't complete the quest. We got everything else done for that quest, but we cannot make the turbine controller. So that is something that we're going to have to put on hold for a moment. Uh, I think everything else should be complete, even though it doesn't say it's completed. Like go back and come back in. There it is. Now it's all completed. Okay. So I click the detect submit now it updated. Turbine controller, we're going to have to put that on hold for just a little bit. So let's put all the turbine stuff away. So how are we going to get that amount of essence? Yeah, uh, I think we might have to start working towards getting EMC at this point, guys. I, I, we've been trying to put it off for as long as possible, but I think we're finally at the point where we have to do that. So yeah, okay, so let's get into this. So the first quest of the Kappa section is the Philosopher's Stone. We kind of looked at this briefly before. So it's a retrieval task. We have to craft one of these. So let's take a look at that. So the Philosopher's Stone is made in extreme crafting. So let's go ahead and grab our extreme crafting table, the dire crafting table. And we'll just place it right here for now. Okay, so the recipe includes some dark steel balls molecular assembler so let's go ahead and start filling out that outside so i think that is 28 dark steel balls we have plenty of those molecular assembler we need three more of those things made those are on autocraft and those are pretty easy to craft if i remember correctly because we were crafting those really early on when we started into the whole applied energistics thing what is it oh okay it's doing crafting tables that's what's taking it a little bit of time all right so there is that so dire crafting table so there's that, and then we can kind of just drag these along the outside here to fill out this part of the recipe. All right, so that's pretty easy. So the next ring requires some enhanced, or no, enchanted, enchanted gravitite, <laughs> uh, vibrantium ingots, and some advanced PCB. So advanced PCBs we do have on auto craft. That is some plastic and some things and some stuff. We'll just go ahead and tell that to auto craft. I don't even know. Is that over here using this machine? I think that might be using this stuff. Mm, it's doing something. It might already be crafted. I don't know. Anyway, uh, so we need two of the advanced PCBs. What else do we need? The vibrantium, a uh, thorium rod. Did I make a craft for that? No. Let's make a craft for the thorium rod. So the thorium rod is lead plates, thorium dust, and tungsten heat coil. We don't have a recipe for the tungsten heat coil. I believe we have to make these a little bit later anyway, so we might as well just go ahead and get the recipe set up for them. Uh, thorium dust, where do we get that? From thorium, pulverized, thorium ore. Do we even have thorium? I'm not sure. Certus... Our Ceres Uranium Ore makes that. Is there any other way to get this stuff? Let's see. 
Uh, we had 30 of it. You know what? I think this is something that spawns in the mining world, and that's the only place to get it, if I remember correctly. Okay, so to set up a recipe to do this, can we just put in the pulverizer? Yeah, pulverizer gives us four of those. So we'll set up a processing pattern for that equals four of the thorium dust. And again, it's probably easier just to come over here manually throw it in. Just put one in there. Get the resulting four dust. Complete the pattern. Like so. And then we can just put that into the pulverizer itself. Instead of having to drag a stack and then right click it, you know, 60 times or whatever. Okay, so that is done. Thorium rod, what else do we need? We have that done. Lead plate, I believe we already have an auto craft. So I will make one of those so we can make the thorium rod. One of these and one of those. Cool. All right, so we got two patterns to put into our pattern here, into our thingy. I'll just stick them right there. No reason to put them anywhere else. All right, so thorium rod, we need four of these. Thorium ore, how are we missing thorium ore? I thought, it was, oh, you know what, are they, they're my inventory. <laughs> That's why, okay. Thorium rod, all right, let's try that again. Oh wait, we needed one more of those. We needed, actually we need <laughs> one more after that. We need a total of four of those. For some reason I thought we had already crafted one. So the thorium rods, I believe, went into these corner sections, right? All right, so then we need spirit binder. That's going to be kind of a pain to do. Uh, gravitite. We have one of those. We have nine gravitite ore. I guess we're going to have to go to the ether to finish that up. Orange plastic. Do we have any of that? We have 61. No, we have 30. <laughs> okay, so I guess I made some of that stuff a little bit ago. So let's do this. And one of those, I think, is how that was set up. Right, so we need energetic alloy blocks. We need four of those. We have uh, quite a lot of right now, so that is perfectly fine. This, this, one of those, one of these. Okay, so then we need demon steel of the eight magnitude oh my goodness um all right so i guess what we need to do we need to tell our system let's see first magnitude can i just tell it to make like a thousand of those is that this is probably something that i shouldn't do actually uh i think what we're gonna need to do yeah let's cancel that that's too many crafts for it to calculate i think what we need to do at this point is just start setting up a chest or maybe a storage drawer Let's do a drawer. We are going to do export. Uh, just an export bus. We're going to need a crafting card. All right. And we're just going to start exporting from our system Temperio Essence. I think that's one thing that we can do. We can also just export the stuff directly into some kind of a crafter that will craft these things for us. I'm not sure which way is the faster way of doing it. The way we make the Temperio now is decently fast, but yeah, we definitely need this stuff. Uh, so let's put the crafting card in there. We need an ME glass cable. Oh my goodness. I wish I would have thought about <laughs> having all this stuff already made. So we need Temperio. Let's just tell it to export this stuff nonstop. All right, so crafting, use stocked items or craft items while exporting. Do not use stocked items only craft so I'll grab the rest of this stuff out of here and I'll just throw it into the thing okay so now we should be seeing in the system that it is constantly crafting this all right maybe what I should do is put in some acceleration cards in there I think if you accelerate it it tries to craft more than one at a time right now it's gonna be going kind of slow I don't want to put too many acceleration cards in there, but maybe that'll be better. Like I'll try and craft like 16 at a time or something, or maybe it just speeds it up. I'm not really sure exactly how that works. Let's just see what it does here. It's still taking a long time before it tries to export, isn't it? I wonder if putting those acceleration cards in there just breaks it. Maybe it can't do that. Let me take one of those out and see what happens. 
No, I don't think it even likes those acceleration cards at all. Hmm. I almost wonder now if making making an interface with a crafting card in it. Well, now it's crafting. Oh, okay. So it says it's scheduled 32 of them. Maybe just having the extra <laughs> the extra card in there just makes it take too long. All right. You know what? It's actually making this at a relatively decent speed, right? That's not going to take forever to craft, but we're still going to need like thousands of these things made. Uh, this might be a thing that we just have to set up for overnight or something in order for this to actually craft. My goodness. Um, so what else can we do here? So the vibrantium ingots, this is made with vibrant alloy and enticing crystal, enticing crystal, soul vial. All right, so we can do that. Let's go ahead and start crafting some of these up. So 34 soul vials. Let's do 32 of them. We'll grab 32 villager soul. We need to do like some kind of a little structure just to keep them in. So let's do, oh, I don't know. Um, cobblestone is fine. Just something, some kind of an enclosure so we can spawn them in and then right click them. All right, something like that is going to be fine. We'll set up an automation for this later because we're going to need a lot of this stuff at some point. But I'm sure if I click in the right spot, I can do a lot of these way faster. Whoop. Okay, that one's free. Whoop. Oh, you know what? I guess it's faster if you just do it right onto the block where they're standing. All right, so we can just go and grab all these guys like so. Oh my goodness, guys. All right, so we got 303 of the Temperio crafted now. It is still crafting, and I kind of figured out that the acceleration cards, why that was going so slow is because I had to calculate how much stuff it is to craft like 32 at a time or a stack at a time or whatever it is when you got all the additional accelerations in there. Anyway, it's fine. So I'll just go ahead and put all three of the acceleration cards in there with the crafting card, and I'll just craft them up. It just takes it a minute longer for it to think about, um, you know, how long the recipe is and all the sub crafts and things like that. But yeah, eventually we'll just start crafting a bunch of them at a time and that's going to be fine, especially since we're not particularly waiting on it. We'll just be waiting overnight. Uh, so our vibrantium stuff is done. I got all of those in here, added our two advanced PCBs and the soul crystal, which goes into the center of this recipe. So we are missing the spirit binders and we are missing demon steel, the eighth and of course the enchanted gravitite. So those are things that we will have to, Take a look at next time. Guys, we're going to go and wrap the episode up here for today. It actually got a little bit longer than I was expecting it to. <laughs> I wasn't really expecting to get into the extreme crafting or the EMC or I guess Project E stuff so quickly, but you know, it snuck up on me. Got to do what we got to do. Hopefully we'll have a lot of the uh, Temperio stuff ready to go for next episode. But anyway, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.